What's up, everybody on YouTube? I hope everybody's doing good. I hope everybody's staying grateful. Today, I want to talk to y'all about something new and special. You know, it's starting to get more and more popular these days, but it's because it's one of those things that Dr. Sebi mentioned. It's called sea moss. Now, I know we talked about the iris sea moss, you know, but in my opinion, the plant sea moss, it may have certain benefits that come from, like, say, iris sea moss, you know? But just like iris sea moss and a lot of other plants that get imported to different areas, doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that the nutrition isn't there. I went to Jamaica and had mangoes there. They said East Indian mangoes, and they were brought over from India. You know, basically imported like a lot of other crops that get imported. You know, even like horses get imported over here. You know, they're running free and growing wild. Now the Mustang is like the most popular horse out there. Sea moss, even though all the hype is around the Irish one, I still believe that the other sea mosses that you can get from other areas are still good as well. So I went ahead, instead of just listening to the hype, what's online, you know, people say you shouldn't do this, you should do that. You know, I went and, you know, took an educated guess on a place that'd be good to order some sea moss from, have it imported, because this Irish sea moss thing, it's hard to find. Like, you find some online and it says Irish sea moss, but you read the description, it says, not actually Irish sea moss, inspired by Dr. Sebi, but this comes from so-and-so and so-and-so. So the one I got comes from a natural farm where it's grown in St. Lucia. Now, if you didn't know, St. Lucia is one of those islands. I believe it's in the Bermuda Triangle, you know, so that's basically in the Caribbean. Caribbean is like a super hot spot for plants being able to grow and thrive. So that's not just plants on the land, but that's also plants that are like in the water. The sea moss is a sea plant, it's a sea vegetable, you know, that floats through the water, you know, it collects the energy from the sun and, and mixes it together with the minerals that are inside the water. Now I know it latches onto a rock and everything, but I don't, the rock doesn't really change size. So whoever came up with the theory that the sea moss gets the nutrition from the rock it's like, that's like a, it's like, like, how'd you come up with that theory? I know there's minerals in the rocks, but there's minerals, there's more free flowing minerals in the ocean, as well as the photosynthesis and energy that comes from the sun as well. Remember, the sun is the source of all life around the whole world, except for them little critters at the bottom of the ocean. You know, the one with the light and the little dangly, the teeth, you know, bottom of the ocean, they don't need sunlight. Everybody else needs sunlight. So I ordered it. It came in a box, it comes dried. It came like in a bag, USPS, because it gets imported from St. Lucia to Florida. And then from Florida, which Florida is like the closest state, <laughs> the closest state we have for importing, at least for getting things quickly, you know, in, in a timely manner. You get it soaked in clean water. I got, I let mine soak in distilled water. Distilled water is not good for you, you don't, it doesn't have minerals. All those minerals that come in bottled water, drinking water, it's like always, it's like artificial minerals. Artificial magnesium, artificial potassium. I just don't know why they want to put artificial minerals in your water. I use distilled water because it's the purest water you can get. Don't rinse your stuff off in tap water. Tap water has all kind of harmful, bad minerals. It's way worse. I suggest you go and check out my tap water video. <laughs> just search through my videos on Slay Edge Media you'll find it on tap water. But there's hard minerals, trace chemicals, all kind of reasons why you shouldn't be getting your water from the tap water. So I use distilled water. Another thing I didn't like, total side note, buying distilled water, not only does it come in a plastic bottle, you know, we can't really escape that, but I just didn't like the idea of having to repurchase and purchase and purchase and purchase and purchase distilled water. So I got my own water distiller subscribe so you can see the video on that it's going to be coming soon i just got it and i'm setting it up you know i'm testing it you know i'm going through that process but if you want to see the process of that it's coming soon so subscribe you rinse off your sea vegetable in some nice clean water i would suggest distilled water and then this time fill it up whether you're like you got it in a bowl or something fill it up and then let it soak you're going to notice the sea moss change within just like a couple hours not even a couple hours you're gonna notice a change you're like damn it looks totally different like it's like reinflated like it's funny how it changes when it gets back in its natural environment which is water I let it soak 12 to 24 hours drain that water out you know maybe rinse it off again and then drain that water out and then put it in the blender now you only need to add a little bit of water now I know for sure that there's companies that sell sea moss gel they water it down before bottling it for the gelling process because one thing about sea moss 
after you bottle it, it thickens up. So you can get away with selling someone some watery sea moss and it not even have very much effect. I didn't add much water at all. I only added enough water just so you could blend it. And you see that it looks totally different. It's rehydrated, it's glistening, shiny. It looks like some kind of little squid alien that's about to pop out and grab my arm or something. It's about to, it's about to come to life or something. <laughs> but when it came to blending, I only added enough water just to help the blender move it around and blend. I didn't add much water at all really you don't really need much water because the plant itself absorbs a lot of water so there's water in there so yeah, i took it because mine isn't really watery so i didn't even really need to wait for it to gel up before i could consume some really so i took i tried some right away tried some right away and literally that day instant results i felt like i had energy like right away like i just got to be completely honest and let you guys know that I feel like in my heart, the stuff actually works. So now here's the next day. I tried it first thing in the morning after I had my spirulina and I'm feeling good today. Like I'm just, I'm out here, it's a little toasty outside, but I'm feeling good, you know? The reason why I wanted to resort to sea moss because I needed something a little more potent that's good with reducing inflammation, replacing minerals that my body needs, as well as just detoxing and healing my body altogether overall full body health like every aspect of your health for your body it helps improve it like in some way of course some areas it's stronger effects than others but it's still beneficial like crazy here's a few of the benefits CMOS is excellent in reducing mucus mucus throughout the whole body so not just in a macro lay like clearing out your lungs like mucus in your lungs clearing out mucus on a cellular level so clearing out mucus for your cells you know and then this kind of stuff helps reduce inflammation it, it helps improve muscle responsiveness it helps improve your muscles healing ability because sea moss is packed with a majority of the minerals that your body needs i think it needs like i think it has like 91 92 93 of all 102 minerals that your body needs that's crazy that's like pink himalayan salt levels too but it's got iodine on it too. So, so many benefits for sea moss. And here's a cool thing about sea moss. It comes in three different colors. I got purple. Each color has special characteristics that basically let you kind of know what its nutrition profile is going to be. Green has more chlorophyll. I forget what the yellow is. And purple is the most richest in antioxidants. So, it has like the richest flavor. But what I can tell you from experience, sea moss gel doesn't even, or just sea moss in general, doesn't even have much of a flavor in the first place it doesn't once you mix it with like a little juice or something because i mixed it when it was fresh mix it in like a cup of water or a cup i mix it in a cup of juice and like mix it up and you drink it and it tastes like there's like pulp floating in the juice like literally that's all it is it doesn't have any flavor if anything it takes on the flavor of whatever you put it in you know so think about that the only smell you got to worry about is when you get it fresh because it's literally just pulled out the ocean and then dried and sent to you it's not like they clean it off for you and everything. So it's still got a lot of that farmy, fresh, oceany, Caribbean essence to it. Like when you open it, you smell the ocean for sure. Like even after you've rinsed it off, it still smells like ocean, but not as strong. Cause before I washed it off, it smelled like real strong sea ocean you kind of smell and cleaning it off dilutes it a little bit and gets rid of that cleaning it helps you get some of that stuff off the surface that's good so now after i let it set basically not even very long just the very next day in the morning i open it up it's literally like like jelly or like jam or uh like people like everyone calls it gel CMOS gel it's it's legit it's legit shit for real so you see why i put my little knife through there and like it whatever i cut out it leaves an indention there it doesn't level no more because it's like it like thickens up. I can see how these big companies, how they could water it down and it's still CMOS gel because CMOS naturally thickens up, but they're selling you a product that's a little watered down. That's why I've seen reviews where people say, oh, the other one I tried was real good. And then I tried this other one and it's like, it didn't help me relieve my pains in my body or anything anymore. And then I switched back to the other one. It was good again because it's the level of concentration that they do. It's a, how much sea moss versus how much water they put in there, you know? You wouldn't need to do no more than like three parts sea moss, one part water. So if it's full with sea moss, I maybe only a third of the way of water, barely any water, you barely even need much. Keep that in mind if you want strong sea moss. But if you want to learn off of my experience and see how it tastes for me, 
just go ahead and subscribe. I'll do more videos on this topic, as well as I'm gonna do videos on my distilled water because that's gonna be the water I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using my own distilled water when I make my own CMOS in the future. I hope this video was useful and informative to you guys. Remember, if you don't believe something, go ahead and do your own research because you might surprise yourself and find out something super good for you didn't even know about it because think about it everything that's good for you usually doesn't taste good at all so like my friend was smelling he was like you can that that smells like it's good for you yeah that you can smell that smells like it's good for you it doesn't smell real good that means it's good for you and anybody who knows anything about about health products the stuff that tastes the worst is the best for you like spirulina straight spirulina with water it doesn't taste that good i gotta use the i gotta use the unfiltered apple juice the thick cloudy stuff I mix that in there with my spirulina. Water and spirulina. That helps disguise that flavor of it. But the good thing about sea moss is it doesn't have a real strong flavor like that. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.